Hey guys, and welcome back to Grandia 2. Uh, we left off right here in the birthplace of the gods. We're almost done with this place, actually. There's not really a whole lot left to do. Uh, we flipped two of the three switches. And the last one is nearby here. It's right in this room, in fact. It's the red switch. So now that we have flipped all three of the switches, and all three of those little dots have lit up, your first instinct may be, well, let's just, uh... You know, go down these steps here, and go in the elevator. Since, you know, everything's lit up. But actually, that's not what we're doing. Um, I don't know why I walked that far down. I'm just kind of wasting time. But, um... Oh, I gotta fight this thing real quick. Okay, um, as you may remember, every time we flip a switch, there's always one of these things here that you can, uh... shoot out a little beam of light, or ball of light, or whatever that is. And, uh, the Switch plays Yahtzee. And then the door opens. Or whatever. And it leads to treasure. So we should probably get that. Uh, there's not really a whole lot of useful stuff. Mystic Potion, a Sun Robe, a Holy Crown, and a Gold Feather. Uh, the only thing I'll probably use out of that is the Sun Robe because it's better armor. Hey, look, an attack item down there. Which I'm not going to go get. Yeah, but all I'm going to use out of that is probably the sun armor, because it's better armor. As I said... Okay, actually, we still don't want to go down the elevator. Um, what we're going to be doing now is flipping the yellow switch again. It doesn't really make much sense. I don't really understand why, but uh, all I know is that when you do so, it changes things around and you can continue, so uh, I guess that's what we have to do. Uh, let's avoid those guys. Those guys are pretty easy to avoid. They don't really uh, harass you much. Now that also that we flip the red switch, we get a very valuable treasure chest in here. Both a uh, super and hyper moge bombs and a kojin charm. The kojin charm is pretty useful because it gives you um, a pretty high resistance to pretty much all types of damage. So uh, it's a great accessory. I'd, I'd put it on somebody if I were you. And and both of those moge bombs are have pretty high attack power, so they might actually get some use too. But now that we've turned off the yellow switch again, the whole thing turns upside down, we get that little ball of light showing up. Now is when we want to head to the elevator. So let's go back through these. Uh, every time I go through those, I think a mini boss is going to pop down and fight me. Oh, man. Okay, uh, those guys don't usually harass you, but I just kind of ran into them there, so... With all the stuff around. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. I'm gonna take this for cover. Just for the sake of having it. And now is when we want to go to the elevator. So let's, uh, it's not that way, that's a dead end. That's a dead end, come on. Okay, I guess it has to be that way. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we want to go this way, through this door. Phew. <laughs> Surprised I actually remembered that. Ah. Uh, went the wrong way, didn't I? I did go the wrong way. I'm awesome. Okay, let's stop screwing around here. This door is where we need to go through to get to the elevator. And this place is, uh unaccessible by any other means. You've got to flip all the switches and then unflip the yellow one to get down here. And a few enemies on the path that are pretty much unavoidable. But thankfully they're really not that much of a threat. Ooh, and I was able to get away from those. Alright, there's a save point here. I'm gonna use it real... oh, come on. <laughs> I tried to use it quickly, but it kinda stuck around on me there. Ah, uh, what is it, Elena? Yikes, those things look creepy. They look like coffins, don't they? Oh, of course, yeah, they look like power cells. That was my first thought, you know. There you go, Ryudo, see? Great minds think alike. Ah. Oh, it took you that long to notice? Those little gray faces inside look really creepy. I mean, I'd imagine, like, standing there with one of those in front of you would be, uh quite unsettling.
Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess that's understandable. Nobody really even knows this place exists, so... Okay, I'm going to use the save point to save real, uh, real quick like. So, uh, be right back. Alrighty. Now let's head into the control room. Maybe something interesting will be in here. What's that? Oh, is it interesting? Well, sort of. It's not a big, huge, epic battle or anything, but... It's a combination of the Granis and Valmar Crest, so... What's that all about? Whoa, Tio. This is a message for me. Okay, why do you have a message? Elmo wishes to speak with you. Does he want us to tickle him, too? Alright, well, let's go that way, because that's descriptive. Head around the little outside of the circle, and... Doesn't appear to be anything there, but upon further inspection, there's some dude up there in the top of the wall. At least I guess that's a dude. Uh, Elmo sounds like a guy's name to me. So, uh, this Elmo guy here is the caretaker of this place. Uh, it must be kind of lonely, because I don't think anybody ever comes down here. Okay, well, I guess the name makes sense now. Oh, come on, Elmo. You know, a seal. Come on, Elmo, work with me here. Like those crests, you know? Eh, close enough. As long as you get it. Oh, what a mistaken reference. Out of all those words, what do you mean by activate? Uh... Yeah, so the system encodes Valmar into a human host, fusing the essence of Valmar with a corpore corporeal body. I guess that's how I'm not really familiar with the word. I don't use it that much, but I'll look it up or something. So it was never intended to act as a seal. I guess uh, that kind of makes sense because everybody who ever went near one ended up getting possessed by Valmar. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess that probably should have been expected. Oh, so we can give a physical existence to the horns, then. He can get rid of those things. But Ryuto would end up becoming Valmar. Ah, we don't understand anything, do we, Elmo? Okay, Elmo is going to show us the ancient records that he maintains, so um, it's really long, and I don't want to have to do another, like, AB episode thing, so I'm going to have to save that for next time. Sorry it's only been, like, eight and a half minutes, but... Um, I don't want to have to, you know, split a bunch of videos up. It just uh, that's just annoying. So anyway, uh, next time we'll hear we'll hear Elmo's story about the ancient records he maintains. So until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.